Hey troops, it's Roy from the Geeks Adventures. Woohoo! Broadcasting from the green couch in the Clintonville section of Columbus, Ohio. So hey, today and actually kind of fortuitous since you know Halloween just passed by, doing a DVD review. It is a review of Constantine City of Demons. Woo! And that's kind of rather ironic as much as we kind of talk smack about. <laughs> Warner Brothers and DC Films for a long list of reasons. Um, the TV and DVD properties, um, I, I think that's one of those moments where Disney or Marvel go, dang, man. <laughs> um, <clears throat> whether it's the animated series, whether it's in a progress forward into um, the umpteen TV series in the Arrow, Arrowverse, Supergirl, um, and now even into the, um, now it's turning into even the streaming product, apparently. Um, case in point, Constantine. Now, the bad news is that there was a bit of a hiccup when the TV series, when the TV series started on NBC. It didn't even get through a full season. Um, but there was still a lot of strong fan following. Woo! Go fans! Um, so the character rolled over to the CW and is a, is a kind of a constant character in um, Legends of Tomorrow. And also because of the success of the Dark Justice League Dark series, Warner Brothers went, hey, let's do a series. Um, so Constantine ended up being on the streaming service on CWC that they have. And, well, because Warner Brothers went, wow, we can make money off of this. They took the first five episodes, I think, actually, the only five episodes at this point, although, from what I understand, has been renewed for next year. They turned it into a film, City of Demons. Woo! Um, so, yeah, we're going to do a review of this, just a quickie. And, um, as always, spoiler shield. All right, spoiler shield, okay? Um, so, are we good? Everybody gone? You in the corner getting the snacks. Are we good? You sure? Don't lie. Don't, don't make me come back there. Don't make me make the, send the bouncer. All right, we're good. All right, fine. Um, so, in typical fashion, um, Constantine just kind of chilling in, in, in London, of course. And unfortunately, a friend of his from back in the day needs help guy's daughter has mysteriously fallen in a coma and of course nobody has any clue what's going on um and of course in typical constantine fashion these people know each other from back in the day at newcastle yeah the notorious newcastle scene now from what i understand it's different from the way it's depicted in the comic books versus what's here in the film either way it the, the the most po the mo the greatest superpower John seems to have has nothing to do with being a mage or his knowledge. It's the fact that bad things just follow him around. Um so John lends a hand to figure out what's going on. And as he get and, and of course <laughs> Um, Ch Chaz is, is the guy whose dog is, is the guy is the um, child's father. Yes, Ch I now is it directly related to the Chaz that's in the Hellblazer comic book? I don't remember, but anyway. Um, and of course, the guy's wife is like, No, no, hey, John, you suck. No, not doing this. It's John. Um, so they go off to figure out what's going on. What could have possibly caused this child's soul to basically sucked out of her body? And it turns into this kind of complex, kind of neat, multi-layered, total train wreck of demons trying to take over the city of Los Angeles. It goes on and on. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> um... It's a, this movie is a hard R, okay, folks? 
at first when I watched it, I'm like, okay, and I mean, there, there, there's some blood that a, you know, that a couple demons getting squished. You're like, okay, yeah, you do this. This is an animated film. Um, as they're invest, as John and Chester are investigating where um, where his daughter's soul has been sucked into, they go to a demonic nightclub in L.A. and it's like Clive Barker kind of went here. A couple notes here. This is what demonic nightclub should look like. They did not play. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, pretty decent amount of blood, pretty decent amount of torture. They're showing snuff films. Um, so, yeah, if you thought things were serious in, in Justice League Dark, no, nothing compared to what they did here. Um, <clears throat> in, in, in typical John Constantine fashion, actually, the other two things, one... Bad things follow John wherever he goes. Two, it, it's it's easy to forget that he's not a mage and a Doctor Strange. Ooh, all powerful. Uh, he is a mage. He has a lot of knowledge, which I think, which which I've always seen as being the one of the things that really makes him so powerful and scares the crap out of everybody in in, in the magical realm of DC. Uh, the other thing is his bad habit of playing all sides against the middle, which, considering the 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 beings he runs into, is not surprising. On the other hand, also explains why how about everybody wants to see him die, ideally in horrific, painful ways. <laughs> um, the story all does also introduce a lot of new concepts. In, in what deities um, and gods are. Kind of actually, actually very Neil Gaiman way of looking at things. Um, you know, you get a run into a lot of traditional demons. You get a, a my uh, Aztec god of death and destruction who's a little pissed um, being drawn into the story. You're also introduced to the city of Los Angeles as a, as a deity, as a being that's grown from the psychic energy from all the denizens of LA. Um, so yeah, very, very, very Neil Gaiman way of looking at how mm, gods, all these beings change um, over time. Um, also, the other, the the other fun thing the film does, it's kind of interesting to see how Marvel is kind of painting themselves in the corner for me in, in how they deal with magic, um, because magic in the end is still just pew 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 pew, just kind of in a pseudo different source. Um, if you will, you know, the, the hope was Dr. Strange would be a great way. I'm sorry, my, my camera's tilting a little bit. Um, uh, you know, Dr. Strange would be a good way to try and introduce people to the idea of magic. But in the end, eh, I like the film, but eh, DC, uh, and, and I think it's because of the huge amount of, of, of material they've had from from Sandman, from Hellblazer, from Fables, um, the idea that it, they, they veered away from the idea of it as a power source and all that kind of stuff, but more about how it works and what's emphasized in DC a lot and in this story is the idea that nothing is free. <laughs> um, everything you do exacts a price. Um, reminds me of a line from the this wonderful miniseries that DC did years ago, The Books of Magic, where this young, this kid, um, has the potential of being the most powerful sorcerer for good or evil in in, DC, in the DC universe. And to kind of help him make a, the decision about what he wants to do, if he even wants magic. Um, let's see here. Phantom Stranger, Dr. Occult, Constantine, of course, and, oh gosh, what was the last? Mr. E, a character that, a kind of, uh, kind of psychotic character, um, are brought in to, to teach Daniel, the, the young, the, the boy, um, what magic is like. And John introduces him to many of the agents that use magic, both um, good and evil. And there's this one character, Sargon the Sorcerer, um, who's dead. Um, you know, so this avatar is kind of explained to him what happened and how he died, and remind tells tells Daniel, look, 
there is a price to be paid. Nothing is free. And that's emphasized a lot in this story, in DC, like I said, in DC's idea of magic in general, but especially this story. Um, which kind of, you know, kind of adds one more layer to everything. The fact that whatever you do, <laughs> it's never as simple as you think. Um, which also adds one more thing to the way the story works and the way magic's handled in DC. It's kind of ironic that that that, um, that for the supers, the ones that don't get that deal with science and everything, that don't deal with magic, they tend to have a more cut and dry, black and white view of good and evil, and you know the way the sides play. In the magic realm, it's kind of more of a reflection of the real world. There are infinite shades of gray. You're doing deals with everybody, which, of course, makes everything cop really, really complicated and adds more to the story, especially in this one. Um, <clears throat> oh, a very fun thing that the movie does. There's this great scene where they're fighting monsters and demons and things are going wrong. And Chaz is like, can't you do something about this? And John goes, who do you think I am, Benedict Bloody Cumberbatch? <laughs> it was awesome. It was so cool. Um, so, hey, I wasn't kidding. Spoiler shield, okay? Hey, it's a funny line. It was awesome. Um, last call. This is an excellent piece of work. Um, it is, and actually... If you're looking for animated halloween -y horror stuff, this is a really good choice. Um, it's, a, it's a great... It builds upon what started in Justice League Dark. Um, I, In some ways, I kind of wish they did have a, a, a DC superhero cameo. Just as a reminder, like in, in Justice League Dark, that look, this is in the same realm as the other supers. <laughs> it's just a realm they really don't want to mess with. <laughs> But they didn't. But you know that's okay. That doesn't affect the affect the fact that this is a really good story. Um, a great example of the horrific things that tend to happen to John, even when he tries to do the right thing. Um, a reminder in a lot of ways too. It's kind of it, you know. I guess it's a kind of a reminder, a, a reflection on on us, the viewer sometimes you pay <laughs> the price for what you've done for a really long time. Remember, nothing's free. Uh, but hey, remember, like I said, this is a hard R, okay? <laughs> You're not playing. Um, so there you go. Please, if you like John Constantine, if you miss the tier series series, if you loved Hellblazer, please get this. Heck, if you just like horror films, please get this. It's a wonderful piece of work. Um, so there you go. Um, one more thing to add to your to your DVD collection. Woo! So hey, um, y'all have a good weekend. Um, may the force be with you. May the odds be in your favor. And as always, please be good to each other. Okay, folks. Peace and love. Bye.